Okay, I'm going to show you how to convert a mains powered hairdryer into a 12 volt battery fan. Um, and I use this process to use a hairdryer to blow polystyrene beads into the walls of my house for insulation. And you can see more details about that in, on myonlinediary.com. So, first a little bit of an introduction to hair dryers. Uh, inside, they're almost universally identical. They've all got the same 12 volt motor, they've all got the same heating elements, and they're all pretty much wired up the same inside. There's a, a switch which will turn it off, usually low power and high power, and that's the speed of the fan. And then there'll be some sort of switch about that will produce um, full heat or half heat and in terms of using a blower to blow polystyrene beads the kind of thing you're looking for is something that has a wide entry space and a narrow exit space so for example this one here is quite nice it's got a reasonably wide entry and a nice narrow exit um, this one's got um, more switches but inside it'll be the same this one uh, just has um, three settings off low and high it's not ideal for a um, polystyrene bead blower because when you get rid of it um, it's quite a big um, exit area so you'd have to work out some way of reducing that with some sort of cup or something. And this one's quite nice. It's got grunty switches um, and a really big entry at the back and a nice small um, exit. And this one I've already partly disassembled. Um, it's okay. It's quite reasonable. So, I'll show you the process. The other thing that's almost universal with hair dryers is that the screws that hold it together are a particular design that um, requires a special screwdriver. Um, if you're lucky, you'll find one that doesn't require a special screwdriver. But those are all Special, special. Ah, oh, here we go. Lovely. So this is a, a boring old um, Phillips screwdriver screw. Um, with these ones, what I do is just drill them out with a drill. Um, if I could be bothered, I'd make a special little screwdriver or buy one. And I don't haven't seen any, one of those in the shops. The very first thing you do is you take the mains plug and chop it off because you will never be using it with mains anymore. Um, and the next, the next step is to drill out the funny screws. This one's proving a bit harder. Okay. So here we are inside. And there's there's a switch. Two switches, one for the fan speed and one for the heater. And there's the motor. And that is that's the whole thing. The motor surrounded by an a heating element and the, the clever thing that almost all heating um, hair dryers do is they use the heating element as part of the circuitry for um, providing 12 volts DC to the motor. They have a, a diode rectifier across the motor which converts 
AC to DC and they have the motor connected across enough of the heating element to provide 12 volts or 24 volts. And that's it. So what we are going to do is basically, first of all, cut off all the heating element because we don't want a heater, we just want a fan. And that process can be pretty ruthless. Cut that off. Cut that off. Um, this is a nice heating element, if you can think of some other use for it. Um, but I can't, sadly. There we are, we've got rid of the heater. And next we get rid of this um, Mylar full because that's just in the way. And we just do it pretty brutally because we don't care what happens to it. And then, and then it becomes a bit, a bit tricky when you come to the wires. What we'll do is snip them off as best we can. That. And we're down to just that. And we'll get into that. Okay, so that we throw away. Sadly. And we're left with a motor, and the fan, and switches. And for blowing polystyrene beads, it's nice to have a switch that you can switch and turn on and forget. Um, you don't really want to have to hold the button down all the time because you just get a sore finger when you're using it. Uh, so we, will, we won't bother using this. We'll hang on to this. So we'll cut that out. And we'll get rid of this. Unscrew that. Unscrew that. And we do it. Like that. So now we are down to um, two wires coming in, one goes through the switch and the other one comes out. So what we want is right, these two wires hooked up to a battery, 12 volt battery, going through the switch to the motor. And we want one of these three wires, and we're not sure which one yet, but one of these three wires that comes out of the switch. Um, and it's most likely to be one of the end ones, normally, with a switch. Um, but we'll find out with a multimeter later on. we we'll just get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that, throw that away. Uh, and we've got um, the motor with all these diodes on it. And in this case we've got some um, ferrite coils as well. That's a, an interesting innovation. And sadly, we don't want those either. So we throw those away. We throw those away. Get rid of that. What we want is just access to the two inputs to the um, to the motor. 
So I'm going to keep on being ruthless. Chuck that away. Chuck that away. And voila. Now we're down to just a standard old 12 volt mo motor with two inputs. And we've got um, a bunch of wires and a nice housing to put it all in. Okay, I have stripped the ends of the mains board and connected it up to a 12 volt battery. At the other end I've stripped a little off all these wires so that I can test it. And the easiest way, you can either do it with a multimeter or the easiest way is actually just to try it with the actual motor. Um, keep your fingers away from the fan and if you look on the motor you, you probably can't see this but um, there'll be a tiny little dot on near one of the um, poles and that is the positive so we've got um, positive blue blues connected to red so red should be a positive and let's try yellow Aha. Okay, so I've got the um, wires connected up to the battery. I've soldered the um, other end to the motor. And all that needs to be done now is connect it all up. Um, screw it all back together. Now I've removed the um, screw that I drilled out earlier because that just would just get in the way. Um, and I've left these just in case I need them um, for some reason I haven't quite worked out. Um, so you'll see that there's some you'll see that there are some slots probably can't quite see in this housing for the wires and that goes in there like that and it usually slots into a particular p position so that it doesn't spin round. We've got the switch back in place. We've got these little doodickies. We've got the slider, switch slider. And if we're all lucky, it will go back together reasonably well and we should be able to alright so what I'll do next is just use a bit of tape to connect it up Okay. If I was going to use it for polystyrene, blo um, blowing polystyrene, I'd cut this bit here off so that the polystyrene can flow through quite happily. And there we have it. It's all done. Oh, and if you wanted to be really clever, you could probably reconfigure the switch inside so that it crossed over the power to the motor and then you could blow one way or the other. Um, that's if you if you really wanted that feature.